What do you know about what happened that night? Uh, he went out on the 23rd of September on the Friday night with his friends. Uh, he was on the phone to me four times without the like, throughout the day. Uh, normal conversation of what we had, just as we always are. Uh, he's then left the bar Flux, I think it is, or Flex, uh, and went and got food and walked along the road. He's then seen on CCTV throughout all this and he lies down in a shop front door and sleeps for two hours. He then wakes up, he's been on his phone after that, he's seen on camera doing that, and he then steps into a back part of shops and is then not seen coming back out. And, and as you mentioned, the CCTV, we're just looking at some of those uh, CCTV images from Barry St. Edmunds after that night out. How is it for you as a family, uh, Derek, and you, Tony, how is it to look at those images? I, I, I'll watch it and I'll just see, see him. It's nothing out of the ordinary for me. I mean, I'd usually be alongside him with him when he was back home doing it. It's... And you spoke to him several times that day. Yes, and then he, him, and how he was, was he? in the best mood ever. Uh, I'd planned to be coming up two weekends after what's happened uh, to meet all the boys from his regiment, meet all them, because I've never met any of them. I've, last time I was up was for Corey's Pass Out Parade. Uh, and we're excited about that. He's booked uh, flights to come up for Halloween to see us and all of his other friends. So it was just nothing but happy feelings on the phones. I think that's an interesting point that... The, the disappearance is so out of character. And I think if we look in the evidence of the case that, uh, that's been gathered so far, is typically if somebody's going to disappear through choice, they make preparatory actions. They put money aside. They, they do different things. There's no evidence of that in this situation. And as Derek has said, Corey goes into an area that's surrounded by CCTV and is not seen leaving. And the, the police investigation at the moment has three possible outcomes. One is that, that Corey disappeared through choice. One is that he's disappeared against his will. And the other, obviously, the one we want to contemplate at least, is that he may be dead. And I think... And the search area um, is wide, isn't it? Because uh, he was walking a long way to his accommodation where he was meant to end up. We, we believe that that's where he was intended to go, to Aria Fonnington, which is seven, eight miles north of, of where he was. Um, and, and this is a walk. This wasn't the first time he'd done it. This was a walk he did. He had only gotten so far along doing it, but the fact of it is he would have been seen on cameras leaving Berry. He would have been picked up somewhere. So you don't People think he ever saw, left? I, I don't, on his accord, did. I do not think he left whatsoever. He would not do this and not be in contact with me, my mum, just someone from the family. He would be in contact. And I, I think this comes back to look at the evidence of these three possible scenarios. Because, again, if somebody's going to disappear, they plan to do it. And they make preparation. Or some significant motivating factor happens that they make a snap decision. There's no evidence of either of those scenarios. And based on Derek and all of his friends and family and how close they constantly are, it doesn't feel as though the evidence supports that as one of the likely scenarios. And in the same way as the, the early speculation about potential links to the terrorist incident in Marham, I think that, that rightly the police have assessed that, that that doesn't seem like a likely probability simply based on the, the assumption that if it had been terrorist-related, they would have made they some have sort of public statement. So, mm -hmm. so if we can discount those two on, on reasoned assumption, that leaves us the other two, which is there's another third-party involvement and this is against his will, or he's had some sort of accident or something's befallen him and and he's now dead. Now, if that's the scenario, this is the, the extensive search activity that the police are undertaking, um, it is a significant area. Um, it's semi-rural, it's very rural in, in parts. Um, the police have limited resources. They, you know, they have helicopters and dogs and volunteer search teams from Sulsar and elsewhere. But we're now looking towards the military assistance through the RAF, the army, from the specialist resources that we've got, potentially from engineering type units in Aldershot, that kind of thing, um, to try and discount that, which only then leaves us with a third party, if that's the route it goes. And for you as a family, how difficult is it to contemplate that, Derek? It's honestly the whole thing I said it from just the beginning, it's just surreal. The whole thing, you just don't know how you're getting through it each day, and it is just each day by each day is 
just what's happening. It's can't even get my head around it. Uh, and what about your mum? She's she, I've, I've been with her uh, every day uh, since since that we found out. And she's obviously with her job being in the police. She she deals with incidents like this, and she can put a brave face onto it. But it's still it's, when it's your own son. It's your son. It's how you can do it. So yeah, she can cope really well with it at some points. But at some points, it just hits straight down to earth of what's actually happening. Um, Derek, you, as you were saying, your brother was out with friends that evening in Barry St Edmunds. Um, what have they had to say about? that evening hell I've met, met up with uh, all the boys now and it's bad because it's these circumstances that I've now met all the all the boys from his regiment uh, all them it's Corey will go out he'll do his own thing it's what we do back home we'll all separate and meet up at the end of the night or we'll just meet up go grab a drink that's, that's what we do him going out on his own accord getting food and going sleeping that's it's Corey the only part that isn't Corey is that he's not turned back up yeah, and there was a, an early lead from Corey's mobile phone, wasn't there, um, Tony? Has there been any development on that line of inquiry? Not per se. I mean, there are technical um, things that the, the police and, and other agencies are able to do behind the scenes um, in regard to trying to triangulate where that device was seen. We know when it last left Bury, and we know when it arrived at a location approximately eight, nine miles away, um, in a frame of time that indicated it must have been on a vehicle. Um, now that coincides with a, a dustbin lorry, a commercial waste vehicle that was was emptying bins from the place that the car was last seen on the video that, that's just been playing on the screen. Um, so that vehicle has been forensically investigated. Um, there are areas of search that still need to be concluded in relation to that vehicle and where it picked up and, and dropped off some of its waste. Um, because it was calibrated though, like the yeah. the weight of it, everything. So what what we mean by that is we know what was dropped into that vehicle in terms of weight, and it doesn't correlate with Cory from the bin. Um, but what what is suspected is that the phone perhaps travelled on phone that might vehicle. Have been thrown in the bin. Whether Cory was with it or not, we don't know. Um, now they are still clearly trying to to locate that phone because it may contain. Um, evidence that, that assists us to try and locate where he is. Um, but it is still outstanding, and that's one of the things that we are appealing for, is for people in that general area and, and possibly slightly wider area. It's a Nokia Lumia phone, um, black, and if anybody sees that, finds one, please contact the, the police on 101 or the incident room number. Um, and similarly, I think something Derek hasn't mentioned you see it on the video, Corey's wearing a bright pink shirt and white jeans. That's a fairly noticeable um, set of clothing. But because the image of him on video has been seen quite a lot, I think people are trying to see him in the context of walking. What we're asking people to do is replay your recollection of that evening. Could you have seen him in a vehicle with other people and not on his own, in a different context, basically? That might help unlock a sighting. Because the CCTV footprint, public and private, is extensive but not comprehensive. And there are gaps. And it would take quite detailed planning to evade a single sighting on all of that CCTV. That's not something that somebody drunk by chance does. Um, and that, that's what makes this so hard to understand as to how somebody in a modern British urban town can vanish mm. without any trace by digital or, or human sight. So you're appealing for information about the phone, if anyone has seen him. Uh, Derek, what would you like to say to the public about this search for your brother? What for help do you want? The actual, the people of Bury, everything that they've been doing, the police, everything. Like What has been done is just unreal how much has been done. But until Corey is found or back then I'd just ask everyone to do every single thing that they possibly could and if that is checking their gardens nearby of uh, Berry where he went missing just anything because there's that little to go on that anything could help. Okay Derek McCaig and Tony Rinch thank you both very much indeed and thank we you. wish you all the very best in the hunt for Corey. Thank you. Thank you.